Oh. Hello, welcome to No Signal. Uh, this is a show where two bozos sit on a couch, talk about tech news or what's happening in tech generally. And drink beer. Oh, and drink beer, of course. Sometimes beer. Yeah. Back Cheers. to the basics. Cheers. Mm. Uh, so, Nick. Yes. What is new in tech? Tell me. What is new is we talked about Pokemon Go last time. Mm -hmm. So we talked about how Pokemon Go uh, is this great way to get people to go outside and... Yeah, we were talking about um, the Minecraft yes. take on it. Though, talking right? about Minecraft Earth and how they're doing a similar thing to Pokemon Go. You can yeah. check it out in the last episode. Um, this time, we're going to talk about how Pokemon Go is going to help you uh, have a better sleeping habit. Uh, it's it's <laughs> gonna how's it gonna do that it's gonna reward you for good sleep habits so is it um kind of like how um pokemon go got people out on the streets it's getting people yeah. into it's beds getting, it's getting people into bed it's getting people to go to sleep um i'm seeing a lot of snorlaxes here yes this is new yep this is a fresh story it's a bit of a surprise um Basically, what the CEO of the Pokemon company said is that they want to turn sleep into entertainment. <laughs> How good is that? Fair enough. So, <clears throat> they're done with people going out and getting exercise. <laughs> now, all you need to do is have a good night sleep. They want people to stay in. Yes, and sleep. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Like, sleep is important. As, as important as getting exercise. And if you don't get enough sleep, there's no way you can go out and get the exercise. <clears throat> no, yeah. It's so, the most important part of the day. I guess during that board meeting, uh, the thinking was kind of like this. Like what our users are doing right now is they're going out and being active. And they're catching not, all this They're Pokemon. not sleeping. What is the number one requirement for, <laughs> for that to be a more efficient process? Mm. Sleep. Good night's sleep. Good night's sleep. So, so what is it? What 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 the hell are they talking about? They're, it's it's. Is this a new game? It's not like we don't know the full story yet. Right. They've just put out some teasers, and they want to turn sleep into entertainment, and uh, it's here. So Pokemon Sleep. Pokemon Sleep. We have a logo. Mm -hmm. I think that's the official logo. It's launching sometime in 2020. And they, they're putting out, you know that device that they have right now, the Pokemon Go Plus? The like wristwatch thing? The Yeah, it's a, like a thing that you don't have to look at your phone to catch yeah, Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. You just, it's like a- device. I know one or two people who have one of those. Yes. It's, it's a step too far for me, but you know. So that device is called- them. Pokemon Go Plus. Mm -hmm. So guess what the new one is called? Minus? No, <laughs> but close. It's called Pokemon Go Plus. Plus. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> one plus is plus. The other plus is the word plus. And I'm guessing it's a sleep tracker, but they probably should have called it Pokemon Go to Sleep. Yeah. Or minus because sleep minus, you know, plus being active no um anyway it has an accelerometer that's gonna you put it on your bed it's gonna track your sleep <clears throat> patterns and habits and mm -hmm. there's we don't have anything specific on what else it's gonna do it's just gonna sync your sleeping patterns by bluetooth to your phone okay and um, and so this would probably integrate with the game somehow so that you are like rewarded somehow, for having way. a healthy lifestyle Somehow, that some way, that's all we on? have right now, literally. Mm. Um, there's not much on it. Uh, it is going to be called Pokemon Sleep. We have Pokemon Plus. We're going to have Pokemon Plus Plus. Um, <laughs> sometime in 2020, we might have Pokemon Plus Plus Plus. <clears throat> but that's the story. And it touches on what we were talking about last time, uh, in the last episode. The so surprising that, positive benefits of these yeah. kind of... Innovative games. Exactly. Real world games. Minecraft Earth, Pokemon Go, mm. Pokemon Sleep. 
and so on. Yeah, right. Interesting. Um, oh, I had a question and, and now I've forgotten. That's all right. What do you got? Well, well, okay. My, my core question is, can you catch Pokemon while you're asleep? I have no idea. No one knows? No one knows. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe we I can... I don't really see how that... Maybe they'll come up with something creative. I'm not sure. Mm. But it's interesting. It's interesting to put sleep... Because nobody's really done that uh, before. You know, you have other gaming concepts that capitalize on activity. You know, you have your Wii and stuff like that and... Uh, but nobody's really touched on sleep when it comes to gaming. And if done creatively, if done uh, good, then, you know, there's potential for that to be something really interesting. Yeah, I'm struggling to think of um, anyone else who's kind of gone down that path. It's It doesn't make a lot of sense, I guess, to the idea of gaming, yes. gaming yes. mixed with sleep. But gamification, you know, the application of gaming... Uh, concepts into the real world gamification can, of real life is interesting yeah, yeah. The, there can be a lot of um positive effects and some negative effects but i guess we'll have, you know, have to wait and we'll see. see yeah um okay well i <clears throat> excuse me um i really enjoyed this this um article i saw earlier um which is about a jumping pogo stick robot um, which is like delightful and adorable and basically I completely agree with the author of this article who um, is just completely in love with it because how couldn't you be? Um, <laughs> it's So it's a robot just that just jumps. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so it's it's a thing out of um, UC Berkeley. It's got ears. And UC yeah. Berkeley, they're always coming up. Well, anyway, um, it's called Salto. And uh, apparently it's named... Salto the Jumping Robot. Yeah, its name is derived from um, a family of uh, animals that can all jump, like the humble kangaroo. Um, and the idea behind this kind of um, approach to a robot is that uh, the, the creators are hoping that something like this could be um, developed to the point where it could be used to get into like tight spaces uh, and and sort of be able to move through those spaces without or, you know it could be used by much trouble paparazzi <laughs> to, to get a better shot to get a better shot yeah. up the window well I suspect um, by the looks of it you know a, a core part of its operation is its weight being really light uh, so it can just fling itself around it appears to have a few couple little uh, fans on it, presumably part of its stabilizing system. So um, this robot itself is not new. The article is about the um, fact that they've announced like a new uh, generation of this, or they've shared their, their latest uh, work on this. And basically what it can do is now it's able to roam around in the real world. Uh, it used to be confined to um, a space that had motion tracking, so they would mm. know exactly where it was, and presumably that would help inform the robot. So now it can go the outside. Robot. Yes, not completely on its own, but like as in it can be driven around by somebody. So it just jumps around. Uh, yeah. Or... So they've got this video here, which um, basically shows off. Okay. At some point when. So it has one foot. This guy's just taking it like, for a walk. It is like a pogo stick. Yeah, and really, then it it's just... like a pogo stick. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. It's awesome. Like, look at it go. That's awesome. And this guy's just taking his like a kangaroo or a rabbit or something pet for a walk. And classic, like these people at UC Berkeley, they're just walking around pretending like this is totally fine. <laughs> this is also touches on a <laughs> this happens concept all the time. we talked about in the previous episode of what it would <clears> be <throat> like to live in the Bay Area. <laughs> you know, you have robots, you have jumping robots. Yeah, you're like, okay, whatever. That's that's normal. That's normal. It's probably delivering Absolutely someone's normal. food. Um, so anyway, this one can also go, I think they've increased its range or its, or its stats. It's capable of bouncing, um, for up to 10 minutes at a time and it can. All right. So during this whole process, there were design meeting, brainstorming and all of that. And you know, there were meetings that were like deciding to build this and then to build the latest generation of this. Yeah. What's the reason? Um, well, as I mentioned before, the. Uh, aim is for something like this to be 
usable in really small spaces such as like disaster recovery where like it's either unsafe or unrealistic to get a person to go through and kind of like but what figure does out what's the going jumping on. achieve um the jumping i think gives it a really unique kind of mobility because it's it doesn't have it doesn't need it's got a lot one, of space to as, as they demonstrate yeah. here with making it jump on a bunch of obstacles oh, okay, and stuff there we go, yeah. it's actually quite stable because it it really only has like one point of contact and has one point of contact know, it won't fall over if it's like it's always a moving rocky area right let's yeah. say it can jump into a hole jump onto a rock and it, yeah it, it doesn't need much space uh yeah and it looks like they've got they've got its stability pretty cool. pre, pre down pat um and it seems like the main kind of thing they have ahead of them is uh allowing it to navigate obstacles so right now it has to be driven by a person so if they mm. threw it into a uh, half collapsed building it would probably just bounce on the spot waiting yeah. for someone to drive it i like this <laughs> see i look at this and i'm not scared of it it's non-threatening isn't it it's it is absolutely non-threatening it's adorable as opposed to boston dynamics robots <laughs> which are horrifying even in slow motion it's more just more just impressive the way it manages its weight it's like a little insect yeah 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 that's Um, awesome so So, that's something to look forward to yeah looks great uh i'll be looking forward to that i guess it can do a four foot vertical jump apparently what's that meter and a bit yeah it's pretty cool all right what else what what do you got how can you top that? It's difficult. It's very difficult. Um, I have a story about cars, electric cars, specifically Honda. Honda has a new car that they've announced, um, the Honda E, and they're bringing out a new concept in in cars. I think I don't think anybody's ever done it before. Mm. They're removing the side mirrors completely Mm. and instead of having side mirrors you have cameras cameras Mm. and you have two six inch displays inside the dashboard (laughs) okay so the concept for the driver it's it's kind of like the same thing they don't lose out on anything right but what honda is saying is um there's a lot of gains because of that first of all it's um the aerodynamics of the car. Uh, they, they're saying that overall for the car, it's going to improve the aerodynamics by 3.8%. Because they don't have the thing sticking out. They don't have the thing <clears throat> sticking out, so air flows much more smoothly Interesting. inside the cars. Um, and there's also the factor of, uh, here, I'll show you a video. So you can have a better idea. Because the first question here is kind of like, why, why would they... Um why would they mess with this because it's kind of it smells of innovation for innovation's sake but maybe there's more well yeah it's got the aerodynamics factor and it also has the benefit of you know when it's bad weather outside your windows all rainy or snowy or frosted and it's hard to see Mm -hmm. because the mirrors mirrors outside of your window it's hard and now you have displays that are inside the dashboard that's interesting because you can move them closer to your field of view. Yeah. Um, something I always uh, experience as a, as a driver is like there's those moments where you, you go to like do a shoulder check or you, you're checking your mirrors and you have to, you're always taking your attention off the road momentarily. Yeah. And it's just part of the, part of the game. Uh, when it comes to the shoulder check, so the, uh, these mirrors improve or well, reduce the blind spot. Yeah. Uh, up to 50%. So they have two options, the normal and wide angle. Right. Okay. Uh, if you if you set it on wide, uh, it reduces the blind spot by about 50%. You would think they could just have two cameras pointing, you know, in in all the directions and yeah. then give you like double mirrors. I wonder if they have that little notice that says objects <laughs> might appear bigger. Um, yeah, or objects may not appear at all because <laughs> the downside of something like this is because somebody's when playing it's... a movie and you're <laughs> yeah. yeah or you know then the camera doesn't work and you're suddenly like 
you go blind. So I I drive uh, I drive an i30 with a rear view camera thing when you're reversing, yeah. and I love it. I depend on it completely, and um, I don't know how to drive a car that doesn't have it. Pretty much, <laughs> you get so used to it. And um, the problem that my car has is occasionally the entire um, system freezes up, and you kind of don't notice until you're like halfway out of the driveway, and you're like, wait a minute, that image isn't moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that's... And then you like, you suddenly have this panic attack. And you're like, wait, what's behind me? How will I know what's behind me? It's like, and then you remember you the can classic your head. thing from the movies when, uh, you know, they replace the security camera image with the spill. <laughs> and the security guard And the security notice. guard just like sitting there like that. And it's like, there's yeah. this heist happening at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of like that. So somebody could hack into your side mirror oh, yeah. system. That wouldn't be good. And put all sorts of objects that might, might appear larger. Uh, in there and you know <laughs> yeah That's, but I, I guess like compared to fully autonomous self-driving cars it's not really a uh, it's, it's like yeah. a very small component oh, yeah I wonder why you know, others haven't done this or haven't been the first to do this again launches in sometime in 2020 yeah okay so a lot of things happening in 2020 hmm. uh, which is kind of cool um, and when you talk about reversing, it also has guides mm -hmm. on those screens when you're reversing as well. So, guides aside from the giant cars that are next to you, yes, that you can probably see out of your peripherals, and you're like, I don't want to just turn suddenly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. So, you're gonna buy it? Uh, no, gonna line up for a Honda. I'm not gonna buy a car just because it has <laughs> displays instead of side mirrors <clears throat> yeah. they tried but they couldn't crack you it's gonna be something else yeah and i mean 3.8 percent improvement in the vehicle's aerodynamic drag doesn't sound <laughs> that impressive well that would maybe that would affect your fuel efficiency but well it's an electric vehicle so maybe it, it saves true. the battery a little bit but it doesn't seem like it's a big number yeah i mean i'm no expert but you can tell just by looking at cars that that's an area that they uh all sorts of manufacturers have you know tesla doing all the, sorts of ways of uh, the, that. the door handles going in thing right mm. and that's officially to be more aerodynamic mm. um, yeah okay well moving on what else <clears throat> a another uh kind of big delightful story this week i know you've seen this story i've seen the story i had this as a story as well this week yeah well, here we are. Um, the moment has come to talk about uh, a brand new handheld games device called Playdate. It's exciting. Which um, kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, and I I read about it, and apparently that's what they planned. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the co-founder said we wanted this thing to come out of nowhere, mm. fully formed. And just blow everybody's minds. Yeah, but it's also completely, as soon as I saw this get announced, I was like, that is on brand for the people who are behind this. And it didn't really seem like a surprise at all. It just kind of seemed like, okay, awesome. <laughs> but you know, like, it's not every day that a new sort of gaming device no, gets announced. No, Right? That you didn't hear rumors about that had no leaks yeah and that's usually because the gaming device market is a little bit crowded and you probably wouldn't find a whole lot of commercial success i mean an example of something similar to this was the ouya which is in the news this week for being shut down effectively because the store that powers it is being um, shut down and that was a kickstarter project from 2012 yeah and uh, at the time you know, similar sort of reception. A lot of people were psyched about this. Um, and then they didn't have a lot of commercial success. So what is this and, and who's behind it? Well, first of all, um, it's adorable. I mean, just look at it. It, yeah, it is, looks very cool. It is well-crafted hardware here by the looks of it. It's a yellow um, square thing. Kind of looks like a floppy disk, I suppose or a, a Game Boy that's been squashed a little bit. Um, but its most noteworthy feature is probably its um, 
crank control on the side. Yes. <laughs> Which is not to um, give it energy or anything. It's for, it's just a control. It's mechanism. a control. Yeah, it's, mm. it's a built-in control. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, Game Boy because Game Boy turned 30 this year. Did you know that? I did know that, yeah. Yeah. And this thing, just uh, to touch on the specs a little bit, is uh, has a black and white display. Yes. Which is 400 by 240. Yes. And no backlight. Yes. And when I read that, I was like, I remembered I had a Game Boy Pocket mm. when I was a youth. Um, and it was great. I was grateful. But at the same time, you had to like sit in front of a light and stuff because <laughs> it didn't have a backlight. So I was like, oh, really? My memories of the Game Boy were I'm outside. It's too sunny outside. I couldn't see shit. <laughs> yeah so yeah there were a few did. problems with that <laughs> you had to have the perfect lighting i guess you have to be indoors and for there to be light for but, you to see but shit. that said they what did they say about this screen it was um which had the quote in front of me but it was like this is the most premium black and white screen you've ever seen basically yeah like it's in the article that out. i have it says high resolution 400 by 240 black and white display yeah 400 by 240 um is usually not referred to <laughs> as high resolution but i guess for a black and white it's, display for this purposes and it's very small yeah and when you're comparing it to the game boy which had other issues going on there like you could um i don't know it's hard to describe it had a very game boy mm -hmm. style screen this appears to be like crisp it's very flat almost like an e-ink game boy was a huge device this one looks really flat and um <clears throat> kind of cool yeah it look, looks kind of cool the yeah. yellow is i like the yellow color i like the crank i like <laughs> the old school buttons yeah so like why are they doing this what what is this how do you play games what's going to be on this um apparently it's coming out next year and it's going to cost 149 dollar dues mm -hmm. or us dollars um, and it's going to come with like a subscription system for games. So you get, for your money, you get, um, 12 games worth, I think, which they're being released yeah. on a weekly basis. They're calling it a season. Yeah. So a season is one game every week for three months. Mm -hmm. So 12 games total and the games are a secret. Yes. So... And they're, they're also coming from like uh, a bunch of indie game kind of royalty folks by the yep. sounds of it. Um, I'm not too close to some of these names, but um, the creator of Katamari Damacy is making one of them, which is awesome. I don't know if you've ever seen or heard of that no. game, but it was delightful and ridiculous. And um, maybe I'll put a clip on the screen here somewhere so you can see it. Um, but anyway, then you've got uh spell tower quop have you played or heard of quop quop was this ridiculous no. horse game where you like have to write a was it a horse i think yeah you had to like get from one side to the other by pressing a bunch of letters and the horse would basically just go out quop. of control yeah it was a physics like yeah. challenge and um the last rocket um not familiar with that one but the these are all people who are uh on board to create games for it and this is like all part of the whole piece that this is like one big independent kind of yep. project. So all the people behind it are independent games creators who uh, pretty much just love making art, interactive art. Yeah, which is cool, which is cool because it's different from whatever else is happening with the big players in this industry. Mm. You know, we're used to hearing announcements about new consoles Oh, or new types of devices that get put out by Microsoft or Sony or Nintendo. But it's rare that we see uh, like a completely uh, irrelevant company, I guess, put out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Not totally irrelevant. No, so the, this device is put out by a company called Panic. Mm. And they are a software company. So they've put out a few really well-made uh, Mac apps. Like yes. Transmit, which is an FTP client app, and um, Coda, which is a web Code development editor. IDE. 
And they've also published a game that I really like called Firewatch. Yeah, they've published uh, more than one game or they've got one coming. But their whole thing is like they've been doing they've been doing what they do for for a while but they they're based in portland um and they uh kind of just create what they want to create you know they're a, they're an independent outfit they've i guess been fortunate enough to um have the money to do what they're doing they've had some commercial success or continue mm-hmm. to have success with what they do um and they're just kind of like they're just like a real lighthearted company that um, I, I always see their stuff on Twitter, you know, like the founders of that company and uh, their thoughts on things and all that. And it's just kind of like nice. I'm happy that they exist and I'm happy that I'm happy that they're doing no, it's this. cool. It's and, so and wild. With that <laughs> price, I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy it. Oh, really? Just to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. 140 it's, bucks. So, I mean, they're it's, not. It's not expensive. They're not going to be rivaling Nintendo with this. And it's possibly likely that this won't have a long lifetime, um, is my prediction. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter because they've created something that's very new and yeah. If, if, the, and if the publisher that they've partnered with are good and it they they put out cool games just for this device, just yeah. cool ways to use the crank, then it's it's worth it. You know, it's going to provide entertainment. It looks cool. Um, the way it's structured as a season with surprises of what games you're actually going to get yeah. is pretty cool concept as well. Um, yeah, and it's it's something uh, like I don't play a lot of games because of the time commitment. Mm-hmm. And if you have if you have something in your pocket, uh, I I really like games. You're gonna carry like, this around? I would want to be a gamer. I just don't have the I guess time to be a gamer. Mm. Um, but if you can if you can have something like this that has cool games on it and you can put it in your pocket just for ent- entertainment i think it's really cool and and panic i've used their software i really like them as a software company um i've played firewatch as well mm. um so i'm excited yeah firewatch was was really well received and mm-hmm. i imagine it uh prints some amount of money for those guys so this is again something that's coming out in 2020. Hmm. I guess the theme of this episode is things coming out in 2020. Um, all of them are very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see in 2020. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm <laughs> definitely. I'm probably not going to get the Honda, but I'll get this one. Yeah, Honda's a little bit more expensive. Yeah, <laughs> and not as as exciting. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, that's pretty much all we have time for so yeah better wrap it up so we'll see you in 2020 (laughs) or next week whichever comes sooner